This week, the Motorhead crew finds a way to fight flat spots on tires, discovers a new spin on fighting filthy filters, untangles some wild wiring, and then a big bad truck bags a bold bumper. Next on Motorhead Garage, presented by Top Coat. Welcome to Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat. So you finally got the boss to use the tire cradles. Yeah, you know the boss. When he parks this Corvette, it could sit for days, weeks, months. That's not the problem. The problem is when he goes to drive it, all of a sudden he asks me to balance all the tires. It's not the balance issue. It's actually flat spots in the tire. No more, not with these tire cradles. And I wish I had these like 25 years ago when I was in college. I was a freshman. We had to park our cars way out by the stadium. So, you know, I was never going to go get it. Lazy college kid, right? So I drive it once a week, twice a week, once a month, whenever I could get to it. And when I would get out there, especially if it was cold up there in the north, start driving it, start chattering. And the wheel was, I, I had no idea what was going on the first time it happened. Then I realized the tire would start to warm up. It would round out, those flat spots would go away. And uh, I was really lucky. Uh, I was lucky that it wasn't a permanent thing. It was just temporary for me. Yeah, and temporary is the key there. It could be temporary, it could be permanent. Now, if it's permanent, that's a problem. These tires get super expensive. Not the problem with tire cradle, man. I'll tell you why. It's all in the construction. This is pretty cool because it's a polyurethane polymer. And what that does, it actually cradles the tire, just like it says. When you run this over, you can see on our Corvette, it forms to the tire. Now, that's doing two things. It's stopping the flat spots from happening because of that nice polymer in there. But it's also kind of cradling the tire, which helps with the temperature variant of the tire and it stops that problem. Now, you know, you've seen the other ones. We've tried plastic, we've tried wood, we've tried carpet pads, we've tried about everything. Doesn't work, you still have the flat spots. So this is the way to go and I like it too. You saw when I pull up on there, usually if you start to go, especially with a rear wheel drive car, bam, you're gonna kick everything out of there. Really a mess. This one, not the case. You see the bottom here, it's all textured finish. So when you drive up on there, it's gonna stay in place. These things really do the job, Dave. And the ones in the front have that bump there. So it'll, you can know where to stop. Absolutely. And it's not just for situations like mine. This is if you have a fun car like this, chances are it's sporty. It's probably not your daily driver. So you're going to take it out on the weekend, maybe on Sunday to go get ice cream or something like that. Or if you live up north, you're only going to be able to drive it in the summertime. So it's going to sit all winter long. And that means flat spots, especially for a performance car. Yeah, and our Corvette, maybe not so much, but the newer cars, think about that. The rims are what, 18, 19, 20, 24 inch rims? Well, what that does, you got a 24 inch rim, you're getting a smaller and smaller and smaller sidewall on the tire, and the tires are getting wider. This thing's 15 inches wide, which equivalates to about a 345 millimeter tire. It can handle a pretty big tire. With these new tires, they do have those smaller sidewalls, like you said, so they deflect less. So that deformation is actually transferred to the tread of the tire instead of the sidewall that would usually pick up that deflection. And of course, these tires being wider as they are, they pick up the temperature from the road or from the parking lot, so that'll make them go flat easier. And being sporty, your cars, we know there's a softer compound involved that makes them grippier and a lot more fun, but a lot more susceptible to flat spots too. Yeah, no doubt about it. You don't have to take our word for it. These things are all independently tested, so flat spots with other things, when they put it on the tire cradle, never happened. You don't have that problem, number one. You got a lifetime warranty. Look at it. There's nothing to go wrong. It's all in the material, my friend. That's what I said. They're going to last forever. They're lightweight. They're easy to store, take with you, motorhome, whatever it may be. They hold a ton of weight on there. And most importantly, things we like the most, right? Made in the USA, man. Got to love that. You got it, and they'll hook you up if you're an American hero as well. If you are a veteran or if you're active duty military, you get a discount. Car clubs too also get a discount. John, your Yugo club, you can hook everybody up. They'll give you a group discount. Just uh, look them up and they will hook you up. Well, that's good that they're low profile because in my Yugo club, we're doing a lot of pushing on the cars and they do a lot of sitting. And it's nice because guess what? You get all four in one pack. You get two front with the bump stops here. You get two of the rears right there. Saw how easy it was. Kick them under there. Bam, drive up on it. No problem whatsoever. Get you set. You're never going to have that problem. You won't have to worry about your fillings falling out any, Dave. Check them out on the web at tirecradle.com. We'll be back with more Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat. Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat is brought to you by No Limit Engineering. We build them, we test them, and we drive them. Mobile Environmental Solutions, the leading portable mobile paint booth. Restore Coat, repair and recolor your damaged leather or vinyl interior. Rhino Hitch, the most versatile adjustable hitch on the market. And by Top Coat. Don't just coat it, top coat it. 
Well, leave it to my co-host Dave to keep his vehicle perfectly maintained, not. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat. Well, there's a reason for that. When you have these filters here, they're very hard to clean. It takes a lot of time. A lot of people's look like this, but not anymore. John, you got the solution for this, man. What do you got here? I do. John, what I brought today is I brought the revolution. I've used these types of products on my personal vehicles and ATVs for a long time. The problem always seems to, they get dirty, you gotta clean them. It's always an all-day process, it seems. So what I've developed, and uh, with the help from my dog Prince, is I've developed the Revolution. And what goes on here is we've taken the cleaning solution, we've put an onboard reservoir. We also have a rinse solution, onboard reservoir. We've made it a 12-volt power supply, so you, if you're in the field, like at, say, Glamis or out uh, camping with the family, you can simply clean a filter, if you need to, out in the field. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. You put the filter on, you put the cover on, you power it up, and you push a single red button. And what's gonna happen there is this filter will start revolving, and the spray will go on the inside, so you're not contaminating or pushing more dirt into the filter. It'll run for about 15 minutes, breaking down those oils and dirts. After about 15 minutes, it's gonna speed up. The rinse is gonna come on, and it's gonna clean the filter. And then it's gonna speed up once again, drying the filter. So after about a 25 minute process, you remove the filter, make sure it's dry, re-oil it per manufacturer's instructions, reinstall it on your car, your hands are clean, the filter's clean, you're ready to go. Now you could demo it for us, right? I mean, you brought a clear cover so we could see it and it doesn't work that way. So let's run through some of the cycles. Oh, certainly. Um, we've modified the filter a little bit for TV, so don't hold that against me. We've cut the top out so uh, you can actually see it functioning as well as the clear cover so that you can actually see the process. All right, so we're gonna run it in, what cycle would this be? So this will basically be the cleaning cycle. It's okay. about a 15 minute process and when it turns on, you can start seeing it revolving. Once it starts revolving, the rinse fluid that you put in the reservoir uh, will start flowing. Oh, you can hear and you can running. already hear the pump running. Right. You can see the color change in the filter. And as it runs that 15 minutes, that's going to continue to spray it, keeping a wetted condition so you don't have to worry about drying. Next cycle just spins it a lot faster? Just spins it a little bit faster and you can start seeing the water and everything starting to come off. And uh, start putting the pump. It'll turn on here in a second. And you can start seeing it's flying off as well. It's going to be clean, nice and clean. That's about a five minute process. And then at the end of that, it goes into a little higher RPM to actually get dry. Perfect. All automated, one push button. John, it's one of those. I wish I would have thought of it products. It's going to be good. What's your website? It is Keep It Clean. It is keep-it-clean with a K.net. Time now for Top Coats Tips and Techniques. The thing I love most about Top Coat is you can use it on every single surface. Now, I'm here in this SUV to show you, because you know everybody's got an SUV, right? That it can work on every single thing in your car, whether you're talking the plastics on the steering wheel, the plastics on your digital readout here on the screen. You can use it also on the leathers. Every sort of plastic and rubber you can imagine. And you know, with the other products that are shiny and artificially greasy, you get a little bit on your windshield when you're spraying your dash and you are in big trouble. It's gonna take you a long time and it's gonna take you a couple more products to get it off of the windshield. Guess what, Top Coat, you're supposed to use it on the windshield. It keeps the frost off the inside and it keeps the water on the outside because it's very hydrophobic. If you are like me, your car was sacred for a long, long time. And if you were like me when you had kids, guess what, you got outvoted. You uh, had to allow eating in the car, which is something I didn't do and I didn't imagine I would ever do until I had kids. And of course, you can't tell your kids when they can eat. They have to eat all the time. And because they're kids, they're gonna spill stuff and drop stuff and that's okay, that's part of the game. The greatest thing is with Top Coat, when you put this on your car, you don't have to worry as much about those stains. In fact, you don't have to worry at all. If you protect your car with Top Coat, especially when it's new, you're gonna make sure that nothing sticks to the car. It's gonna protect all the surfaces from the leather on the seat right down to the material on their car seat. And of course, on the floor, you can use it on the carpeting or the floor mats. It'll make sure that nothing sticks to the car. And when it's time to clean it up, you'll be able to, to wipe it right up. You won't have any of the messes that you had before. And if you have a free moment, maybe you drop the kids off at practice or something like that, you can grab top coat right out of your cup holder because it fits right in your cup holder conveniently. And you can take it to the outside of the car and use it on everything on the outside, from the glass to the paint to all the plastics and all the trim. Top coat works on every surface. I love it. You'll love it too. Check them out at topcoat.tv.
Well, your car may have a rough idle, may have a hesitation, may be hunting for the idle, and it could even stall. It may be time for a throttle body clean, and it's really simple to do. All I'm going to do is take the air plenum off here, right on the intake here on the throttle body. Once I get that off, I can go ahead and pull it off. We can take a look at the actual throttle plates themselves. Two little hoses right here. Get them out of the way, and voila, there it is. Put that up out of the way so you guys can see. Wow, that thing's all gummed up. Now, it's more important more than ever now because of direct injection. And get you some throttle body cleaner here. Just go in here, go in there, spray it, wipe it down. You can see that stuff coming off. Make sure it's safe and read your manufacturer specification when you're cleaning the throttle body. Sometimes you don't want to go pushing on the throttle plates and open it because it's computer command drive. It drives right here and you may have to go in and do an idle relearn or an idle procedure. Now I said it's more important than ever because of direct injection. Well think about that. We're actually directing the fuel right into the cylinders. We're not going over the intake or valves anymore to go in so all that carbon's getting pushed up back up that intake and gumming up that throttle body like that. So if you just clean your throttle body once in a while, you're going to make sure your car has a good idle and it's going to last for a long time. Motorhead Garage presented by Topcoat coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Pickup trucks, everyone loves them, they're super useful and everybody has them. So chances are you want to set yourself apart from the other folks out there driving trucks. This is a good looking truck, big chrome bumper. John, there's a solution out there, something that looks better, something that's more durable. What are you thinking? Yeah, adrenaline bumpers, they're in the house, and this thing is definitely going to be safe and make that truck look beefy. Why is it so safe? Well, it's actually 3 16 steel. Now, most bumpers are made out about eighth inch, not going to do the job. You can see the welds right here. They're double stitch welds, Dave. It's beefy. It's going to do the job, and you can get it customized as well. Basically, every one they do is customized. They, once you tell them what vehicle you want, the cutouts you want for the lights, maybe your logo up here, they will custom make a bumper for you and send it out to you. That's the beautiful thing. I mean, the logo right here, you got this one in stainless steel on the back. You can put a color back there. You can put lights, whatever you want, your logo, whatever you want to put on there, the side, the front, wherever you want it, he'll place it there. Just call him up and talk to him. He custom makes them all. The LED lights, phenomenal. I mean, one little hook up here, you're drawing hardly any amperage, 12 volt source, bam, you got LEDs on the front not only do you have safety you got good visibility you got it and I'm talking safety by the way you got the Joe Theismann face mask here the single bar you can get the big linebacker face mask as well anything you want they can do all kinds of bars on it installation do-it-yourself job they give you the brackets on the back which are adjustable you move them up and down you can move anything out of the way you're not gonna have a problem you also have the coating here which is bed liner super super durable Dave it's safer it's better looking and it's more durable and it's not that expensive. You take a look on their website. Those are Canadian dollars. You're getting a great deal on these. Check them out at AdrenalineBumpers.com. Well, we got a good looking Jeep in the shop, but the cool part's really underneath here. If you look under here, you see the frames all pretty in black, our strut tower. Everything looks pretty good under there. Whether it's a mall crawler or not, Dave, that's not going to last, and you know why. Well, especially if you're up north, because in the wintertime, you get the salt and the brine. And of course, salt was kind of the old way of doing things back in the 70s and into the 80s. Uh, they were using salt on the roads. It didn't stick to the roads all that well, so somebody came up with brine, which is a great idea for making things safer, but a terrible idea for your car. It sticks to the road, so it stays on the road and keeps it free of uh, ice and snow, but it also sticks to your car in the same way, and that creates a lot more corrosion, and it's awful. Yeah, well, our friends at NHOU Protective Coatings, they have products for both, but let's start with a new car. Maybe you have a car with a little bit of miles on it and the frame looks like this, no problem at all. They have a wax they can put on there, a coating systems that's either black or clear. This one here, we would probably go with the clear because it's in good shape. You put it on there, you go under there, you're good to go. Now, okay, that's a brand new car. What do I do if I've got a car that's, you know, been around, been driving up north, it's got some rust underneath it already? Well, great question. They got you covered there as well. They have a brine eliminator, man. This is a spray that's going to eliminate 99% of that brine. That's the first thing you want to get it off of there. And perhaps it's an older car. Maybe you have a little bit of rust looking down there. Or it's not as pretty as this one. You can use their black, go into there. It's going to look like brand new. They have the tools to do it with, all the nook and crannies. They can get up under there. You can do it yourself or you can take it to a certified installer. Either way, it's going to work. And I know their product works. This is tested. It's proven. 
we've been to their laboratories. They've got a salt spray chamber and they spray salt on all the metals and they see how long it takes to corrode. They also test it against some of the competition, the other products that are out there, and they found that this is superior. This is the best thing you can buy. Yeah, I mean, you can cover that stuff up with some spray. It doesn't work. It bubbles back. But Dave, it's all about the maintenance. Do you maintain your car? You bet. Well, mostly. Uh, get my oil changed on a regular basis. Get your transmission fluid changed. Get your tires rotated. So when you're taking your car into the garage, while it's up on the lift, might as well have them do this for the season. Well, that's the mindset to get in. Just go ahead, have it maintained. Do it yourself or have them do it. Check them out on the web. Get the product. Keep your car lasting for a long time. We'll be back with more Motorhead Garage presented by Topco. Motorhead Garage presented by Topcoat is brought to you by Airworks Compressors. It wasn't our idea, it was yours. Wild Horses 4x4, isn't it time you answered the call of the wild? Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. ProCut International, the fastest, most accurate and profitable rotor machining system in the world. And by Adrenaline Bumpers, America's working bumper. Welcome back to the show. You are locked in to Motorhead Garage presented by Top Coat. And chances are, since you're watching our show, you love off-roading. You might love Jeeps like the one behind me, or you have a UTV or a great looking truck. You want to accessorize it, you want to customize it. And Mike with Mike's Off-Road is going to show us what he's got to add some accessories to your vehicle. Well, I've got an eight gang solid state switch control box that you can add lights to, air horns, uh, anything auxiliary that, uh, you got relays running everywhere. Well, this simplifies it. All the relays are built into this box. You just put your accessories straight into the box, and so you don't have to make so many pass-throughs through the firewall. Make one pass-through through the firewall, through the controller, and everything else goes straight up underneath the hood, and it makes everything simplified. That's super simple. You can add accessories if you're heavy into off-roading, compressed air, and that sort of thing. If you're just going to have some fun, you can put your refrigerator on there and do you, whatever you want you to. You sure can. Yes, Cust sir. It works fine. All customizable to your needs. There's a cool feature you have on here. It's a memory feature. Show me how that works. Well, you got individual buttons here and uh, to operate everything. And, you know, it's, you can turn it everything off one push one push back on but it'll memorize where you're at so you know if you've got your favorite lights on and you got to switch it on and off really quick or just for a moment you can hit that button shuts everything down everything's clear or whatever you don't have to remember which button you had on you just hit that button again it memorizes what was the last click and then you can you can just individually turn what you want on and it has um, it has 5 amp 10 amp 20 amp and 30 amp capability. And some of the most common accessories off-roaders like to use, of course, lighting. And you've got some great looking lights from Zombie Lighting, and you and John are gonna show us how to install them. Yes, we are. Well, this is already a great Jeep, but we're gonna make it even better, man. Mike, when we get done, we're gonna light up things like New York City at night. It's gonna be incredible. Now, to start, just the hood hinges, a couple of T47 Torxes, we took those out. Ready to go, Mike, your light bar. Super easy, man. Walk us through the installation. I got the whole wire harness right here for you. Well, what we do, we just set it right back up on the hinges on top of the hood and line them up with the, with the hood hinge bolts that we just took out. All right. And we carefully get them started back in. Now, that's the beauty of it. With good engineering, we got it coming right down to the right hinge bolts. Hey, we don't have to drill anything in the Jeep, no modifications whatsoever. No, it's direct bolt on. That's perfect. So we're not doing any damage to the Jeep whatsoever. If we want to remove it from Jeep to Jeep, we can do that. Got my little T47 here. You got your started. I'll give you a little wiggle room. Yes, sir. Trying to. Got yep. uh, little short fingers here going on. Yeah. Fits perfect, though. It goes right on the brackets. We're going back and re-securing it back to the hood. Now, after we get this tightened down, all we got to do is go underneath the hood. Boy, when we popped the hood, we found a nasty surprise, but actually a surprise that your box here can handle. If you look over here on the positive battery cable, you can see everything's tied into that. Not a good way to do it. Massive voltage drops and corrosion is going to happen. Mike, your box is a better way to go. Oh, yes, sir. It sure is. Uh, all these lights and these other uh, accessories he has on the Jeep, we can uh, move them off that post and bring them over here neatly and add them to this box here on uh, matched breakers right here and clean up all this wiring, be safer, cleaner, 
yeah, you're getting protection. Next step we did, we actually took the box and we mounted it right here. Nice location. I mean, you have this bracket right here. Now this bracket can go anywhere you want to, but that kind of worked out good. We had the hood clearance, Mike. I mean, nice installation. Yes, sir. That's a, a great spot for a Jeep right there. Absolutely. Yes, Got plenty of hood clearance. Then we took off the air cleaner. Once we took off the air cleaner, just to gain access to our breaker panel here, which is really, really nice. Talk about that a little bit. Well, that's a 100 amp uh, resettable circuit breaker. In case we have an overload or we got a massive short, it'll pop this break, breaker before we have an overload and uh, have a meltdown of wires. And it's resettable. You just go over here and just flip it back like that. And when it, when it pops, it trips up like that. So uh, hot would be right there in that position right there. Perfect. Well, let's go ahead and trip it because we're going to go ahead. The last thing, you got this wire here. Yes, sir. I'll get it started down here. That'll be I'll our last piece here. of the puzzle here under the hood. So if you want to run it up there. Yes, sir. Once you get that started, I'll go ahead and uh, we'll pick up this other line. See if I can get it tied up there for you. There you go. And get mine started down here. That's running the leg from your box actually to the power supply through that breaker. You got to love that. Yes, sir. Get it right on here. There you go. We'll snug up that. Last piece of the puzzle. We'll just take this wire here, plug into the box. Mike, you got to go under there, drill a hole. Yes, sir. Got to drill a uh, half inch hole uh, through the firewall. I'll tell you what, I'll feed it down to you. Yes, sir. Well, we got our wires tucked through the firewall, the bulkhead, and we're ready to start the installation. Mike, what did you have to do on the inside? Well, after we pulled the wire through the firewall here, I had a quick connect to hook it up to the controller here. You just plug it in and uh, screw the nut down, and then it's ready to go. Now, you can mount it anywhere? We can mount this thing anywhere you want. We've got plenty of cable still underneath the hood for that. We can mount it anywhere we want. We've got this universal bracket, and uh, it's ready to go. We've got a bunch of buttons. What we got they buttons do? here. we got eight buttons, and you just pick the ones you want. You can turn them all off. It'll memorize those three back on for quick, or you can just manually turn them off like that. Now, the cool part is you actually have the labels here for the buttons. And in this Jeep, that's hugely important because you remember all those wires? You got his upper lights, the lower lights, the floods, fans, anything you could want. You can actually tie into that panel, use this button, and it's all labeled. That's right, because I can't even remember the two buttons. So well, it's best to have them labeled. There you go. Well, we got it all tied in, ready to go. Let's light this thing up like okay, Yankee Stadium, here we man. Go. Three, two, one. Bam. Whoa. One more, and you get the inside oh, ones. Bam. Bam. We got bam, them all. Bam. So the cool part is these are actually floods on the outside and spots, and they're beams you can move them, man. That's incredible. Yes, sir. Yeah. Get maximum light. Well, check them out on the web at zombielighting.com. Well, folks, we're out of time for today. We had a great time here at Motorhead Garage, and we sure hope that you did, too. If you got a cool product you want to get on, just email Jeff at masterstv.com. We'll see you next week for more Motorhead Garage presented by Topcoat.